um, Republican candidates that have submitted to Democratic candidates submitted, no progressives submitted um, a petition. And all other petitions are either done countywide or statewide. So I don't, there's a list on the Secretary of State's office, but they don't come through my office. Okay. And, and the other thing I was just going to tell you quickly was that I attended two weeks ago the um, International Municipal, Municipal Clerks Conference. So it's like the national conference. And I was recognized on stage. It's the one time that a clerk is actually recognized on stage um, for getting my Athenian fellowship. And so I thought if I ever went to the national conference, that was the one time I was going to go. So it was the only one from Vermont that was recognized on stage. But there are six of us currently. So congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Back to town. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. <clears throat> All right. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of May 16th, 2022. Make a motion by approval. I second. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Jess. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? Yeah, I do on page four. It's just a typo, but Brian McDowell. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I think I don't know. Don't know. That's a combo. It's, it's a combo. It's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. It's under number six. All right. Is there any more <coughs> discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes have been moved. Passed. <clears throat> um, liquor control. Do we have liquor control tonight? No. We'll move to new business. <clears throat> Number one, review and sign rules of procedure for jointly appointed subordinate boards. We have a copy of that. The village has seen it and passed it and signed off on this version. We must the last version of it, so this version goes back to this point. Okay. I make a motion that we adopt the the newest version of the rules of procedure for jointly appointed subordinate boards. Okay, I have a motion by Jess. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on these? Okay, you'll get tired of me. There's two typos under number nine. Second line, it should read Select Board of Morsefeld Village Trustees of any vacancy on their board that within should be struck. Okay. Okay. And then on the third line, at the end of the line, by should be struck. Good catch, Don. Awesome. All right, any further discussion on these? Can Don here read the first yeah. part of that? Uh, number nine, yeah. line two, strike within at the end of the line. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to see within? Okay. Yeah. The, the typo. Yeah. It's not going to change the substance of the paragraph. No. The meaning is simply a, in, a double insert word there. Program. That's so I'm not going to send us back for another. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a typo. Yeah. And yeah, and same with that line three. It's a double. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yep. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Number two, review and adopt sidewalk policy. So this is a, then a recommendation uh, we've spoken about a little bit in the past with the increased expense of concrete over uh, the tunnel's asphalt. Uh, what I'm suggesting we change here is the requirement on some streets in our village um, to be the surface be changed so we can use blacktop. Um, the, as you can see the wording there, down the side streets for the traffic is substantially generated by the residents thereon. All sidewalks should be at least 16 inches wide, which is the same width as the concrete, not including carpet, and composed of bituminous asphalt be at least four inches thick. Uh, you'll see uh, the changes um, in the, the color blue there. Uh, 
We are still maintaining the concrete on those thoroughfares through our village that have high volumes of traffic. Uh, it would look patchwork, uh, terrible to have a combination. So we're looking to keep those concrete. But we're talking about streets like uh, Court Street, Summer, Harrison, some of those on the side street where mostly it's the local residents that are walking the sidewalks. Uh, we'll still get is a lot of life out of those because they're not high volumes, but we can do it at a much lower cost than the concrete. This, this change in the policy would allow us to do that. And you see at the very, very bottom in the asterisks uh, out of 5B, this determination of what is a main street and what is a side street for number five of this policy shall be at the sole discretion of the select board or their designee. So um, we won't have a developer or a homeowner who decides if the ERD says you need to sign up for your house, they can just throw up blacktop. It's, it'll be designated by folks mm -hmm. now, I know we've had this conversation before and we've talked to Kevin about it too that <clears throat> this is really the first time we're trying this in Morristown I know other towns do it I know Stowe does a lot now and um, I guess the biggest question is we don't really know about wear and tear yet until we see what the machine does over a winter or two right but we know it's substantially cheaper it, is there a cost average or cost difference that has been figured out I know it's got to be a lot cheaper, but we could bring the cost estimate difference. Uh, Court Street is our target street for the blacktop to try it on that sidewalk is in, in great disrepair. Uh, it needs to be pulled up and replaced, and that's where we intend to do the blacktop to start with. Um, we can certainly take the same measurements and get a price if it was to be concrete. That would be helpful, I think. Mm -hmm. cost mm -hmm. we'll certainly do that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with Bob. Like, I'd like to know um, the cost analysis and the longevity. Yeah. Because, I mean, it is important to save money, but it's also important not to have to do it twice in a right. short period. And uh, I don't think it looks as nice. Um, but I also know that, like, I've seen it in Stowe, and it doesn't yeah. look that bad. Be interesting to talk to them and see what they've got. A few years of it. Right. Done it, but. Yeah. Along 108 there, we can yeah. make sure it, yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about that yesterday, Kevin, and going up Congress Street, how there's an asphalt curbing, and that's actually held up better than what I thought it would. You know what I'm talking about, yep. up there on the left? Yep. And I thought when it was first put down, oh, that's not going to last, mm -hmm. but it has lasted a few years, hasn't it? Yeah. It's got a few gouges here and there, but that's another cost savings, I'm sure. Well, one of, the, and one of the big differences for us is for like the wear and tear on the sidewalk machine itself during yeah. the winter time. Of course, the cement has a, a groove every so many feet, and the asphalt's going to be smooth right down through, so you won't get that bang, bang, bang. Right. That. Not, not to mention the operator. Well, yeah, the operator will appreciate it. Yeah. I think it's a good thing to try. Let's see, see what happens. Any other comments about it? So you were you were asking for some information. So you, you want to table the policy till you get the information, or are we going ahead with this? I think we're going to try it anyway. I think the idea is to try it, but it'd be nice to have the information, the data, to support it or not support it. You know, and if it's worth it. <clears throat> Everything that's underlined is new language at this point. Is correct? Everything in the blue. Uh, we don't yeah, have, we don't have blue. We just have. Um, we have copies. So underlined. <laughs> so so given that. Have we designated what those main streets are yet? No, that's why we put the determination on the bottom there. Yeah. The, uh, to me, main streets are Elmore, Park, Portland, Bridge Street, Lower Main Street. So the ones that the, the volume, that's volume of traffic flows through and sees, and it's, a, it's all concrete already. These, uh, these sidewalks are off side streets, and in fact, some of the streets don't even have any. Sidewalk is a very wide, Union Street is a very wide street. There's areas that the people walk on, but they call them a sidewalk. There's no delineation between the sidewalk and the street itself. So, um, kind of the cost of concrete is pretty significant, and uh, we can we can get a lot further for the same amount of money using blacktop. Thank you. Okay. Do you want a motion? I make a motion we accept the Morristown sidewalk policy as presented to us. Okay, I have a motion by Don. Second. Second, Second by Judy. She beat you. 
Any further discussion? Um, <clears throat> I guess I'm a little concerned um, that if we don't um, if we don't designate the main versus side street explicitly, does that leave us open to um, critique around um, favoritism? Um, or is it, you know, what are the pros and cons of that? Um, that's my only concern because there has been a lot of talk lately um, around on sidewalks. On sidewalks yeah. So um, I, I personally would prefer to table this until we understand the, well. Outline what's what? Outline what's what and understand the difference between concrete and asphalt. Yeah. I just, I, I worry that because we've had so much talk about sidewalks, sidewalk improvement, getting rid of sidewalks, that, um, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't seem. Um, I don't know. It's. I. I don't feel great about it. I guess that's the best. Is there. Is there. Um, a reason to do it. Before like the next meeting, to get this done now. <clears throat> no. Because uh, I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking what you're saying, and to me, the main streets are anything that's on Route 15, Route 100, Route 12. Those are the main ones in and out of town, the main streets. That's pretty easy to clarify, you know, anything like, like even Congress and, and Maple are not main streets, they're side streets. Right, but then it's like, so what What measure are we, you know, what, right. um, what measure are we using? Who's doing the measuring? Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. a certain number of people per day or hour? Right. And how do we know if they're residents or not? The count. Like, yeah. The attempt in the yeah. language yeah. that uh, was drafted was that side streets, uh, traffic is substantially generated by the residents. Yeah. Um, you know. Anecdotally, yeah, I, I, anecdotally I understand it, you know. Yeah, Just, it would be good to have it defined. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. like really, Congress Street and Maple Street are streets that people walk around on. Yeah, and Washington right. Highway too. Yeah. As I meet tons of people on Washington Highway, but. I would think it'd be a visual. The places where people, most people are driving into the community to, and they can see the sidewalks. Maple Street, people are going to the hospital all the time. And so we already have a so nice looking sidewalk there. I think keeping it on, like you would suggest it on kind of the side streets. Sounds very appropriate. Well, the beginning of the description says we shall make sidewalks, like if you've got to go to shops or restaurants or you know, businesses where, like you said, down these side streets, there's not that, it's mm -hmm. just the people that live there. Right. So that might be a way to check, check it too. Yeah. And then also what Eric said, the ones that are already concrete, we're not going to take the concrete out and, and use asphalt, you know. Unless it goes bad. Then at that time, if, if asphalt's working good right. and working right. for us, we eventually could, we could. But. Yeah. And also, just that the asterisk just gives us permission to um, make the determination when the need comes up. Is this a main street? Is this a side street? For us to, to decide that now may be a little um, ahead of ourselves. How do you guys want to do it in Dallas? Well, for us to make a decision on which one it is, we probably ought to have a critique of what it is. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. said, is it how many people? I mean, right. we have no idea how many people would go in there, but you, right. but you can come up with that. But it's the idea of, is there businesses there, or what's the reason for us right. to pick that street? Because again, I don't want to get into the one where I got a friend that works, lives on that street, so I don't want that, you know, or something. Right. But I think we yeah. can make that determination when it's time to replace that sidewalk. Right. But it ought to be in writing, I, I think, or some kind of a, a guideline for us to... <clears throat> It wouldn't hurt to have that. I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure about doing it now and at this point because we can change that because you have one tonight we're, we're approving, right? Wow. Sidewalk? No, not for, not for uh, not asphalt. The sidewalk beds are for concrete. Yes, but there's a concrete one tonight. That's correct. Yes. yes. But this is really in front of us, so we can change the policy to allow the use of asphalt where we decide to try it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really, it doesn't have to say what streets, 
you know, if we decide on a street that we want to try asphalt, that's what's the reason we're making a change in the policy, right? The, the reason for changing the policy is really money. It's right, oh, yeah. Off. We're right. trying to conserve money, get the most distance out of our numbers. Right. Can. On streets, there's traffic. We're talking about wear and tear on, on sidewalks. The sidewalks with the least amount of uh, pedestrian traffic are typically the ones in the interior of our village, not on main drags. It's they're they're generated by the, the residents in those neighborhoods, so they are going to wear out as fast because long of the traffic is not that high. Right. Uh, but, but you know that was our, our intent was simply to try and save save money, get more distance, and get more sidewalk done with the same yeah. amount of cash that we have. Um, that that was a suggestion. So the issue isn't the asphalt, and certainly the issue isn't trying to save money. Um, the issue is just whether or not we designate those main streets right. now. Right. I kind of like the idea of tidying it up and, and doing that. And if it doesn't matter if we do it tonight, if we could do it at the next meeting, right. designate what those main streets are. Right. So there is a motion on the floor. Should we can we table it at this point or vote or vote? I can withdraw my motion if you'd like. Either that or just vote and vote no. Vote no. Which is the best way to do it, Sarah? Probably withdraw. I'd like to withdraw my motion. Okay. I'll withdraw my second. Okay. Are you okay with that, Eric? I'm fine. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Well, it seems like if you vote no, that gives a negative right. Right. Yeah. connotation yeah. to that. Yeah. Agreed. Now that you have that Athenian designation, <laughs> <laughs> the Athenian decree. I love the thinking of you with like an olive crown and That's awesome. golden sandals. We should have had like a tiara yeah. made up for the. The theme of the conference was denim, diamond, and denim. It was in Little Rock and then the Diamond mm. Mm. So normally it's like this big fancy gal, but no, nope, they wanted us to wear jean pants with a tiara. <laughs> That's awesome. To the banquet. That's amazing. <laughs> Very cool. Start referring to their office as a <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move to the next one. Uh, number three, appoint, appointment of John Meyer to the Planning Council. This is a familiar face. How are you doing, John? Good, how are you? Good. Are you uh, up up for it? Oh, yes, I am. Very good. Yeah, I'm excited. Can, can you uh, tell the rest of the board, some of the newer members, uh, what your role has been in the past in Morristown? Yeah, so um, I've been on the planning commission before. Uh, I don't know if my letter of interest is in your board pack or not, but um, at the same time, I was also on the Centennial Library Board. <coughs> Uh, I only stepped off because I was going to miss a big chunk of time because uh, I was going to coach Little League and we were planning a big family trip and that. So um, I didn't leave because I didn't like it or I was frustrated or anything like that. Um, I can't necessarily say I always planned on coming back to it, but uh, I saw the opening and I enjoyed my time on the board. I enjoy planning in general. Uh, so. Um, it's a great fit for my for my interests. Uh, I think town is really interesting right now with everything that's happening. Uh, in some ways, uh, some of the things that we talked about when I was on the board 10 plus years ago are coming to fruition now. So that makes it even more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Thank um, you. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I kind of no, did. No, it's fine. I, I, I kind of thought you would ask me something yeah. like that. So. Yeah, because I knew you'd been on a long time before. Yeah. And um, I, I always remember going to meetings that you were on, and uh, it was very good. Nice having you on the board. Well, thanks. So, do I hear a motion regarding this? I make a motion. We approve it. I'll second. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Judy. Is there any further discussion? What made your kids decide to go to Temple? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm actually also a Temple alum, although I try to be really careful not to steer them that way. Um, it's a long story, but I would say for both of them, it just kind of worked out that way, and it's been a good fit. I, I am all, all but, uh, I didn't finish my thesis, so I didn't get my degree. Oh, okay. It was a master's degree, yeah. Oh, yeah. Temple owls are everywhere. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Um, I. I'm looking at your credentials and they look really impressive. I just have one question um, and it's something I would ask anyone. Do you feel that um, your position on any of, you know, the, I, I, I feel that I know the answer, but on the Morrisound Historical Society board or as an alternate, alternate to the Lamoille Fibernet board would create any conflict of interest or how would you, um, how would you approach a situation where you felt that you couldn't um, really be unbiased? In a, um, in a planning or decision-making process. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have applied. I'm certainly open to, to feedback about it. And um, when I first joined the planning commission, I forget what it was we were talking about at one of the first meetings, but um, I was pretty new and green at that point. And uh, so whatever it was came up, and I said, you know, like, I would like, a short ways from this, like, should I recuse myself? Is that would that be appropriate? And I can't remember who said it at the time. They said, Look, this is a small town, like, you're somehow related or close to everything, so um, you know, it's gonna happen. And if it's appropriate, you need to ask, or you know, other people have to speak up, and you have to be open to that. That people will come forward and say, You know, I don't know, really you that's right, that you're doing this. Um, I don't see any direct. Um, I think maybe the closest one could be the Lamoil Fiber. Um, but we're going to see how that plays out. I'm also only the alternate, so I'm not a voting member on that board. But, you know, if um, Jane were to step down or something, or, you know, if I had to step in for an important vote, I think we could certainly have to have that conversation. Great. Thanks, John. Yes. All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any votes? I'm going to abs I'm abstaining as a longtime colleague and friend okay. of John's and his wife, and having taught his kids and having taught his wife. So. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, motion is passed or passed for oh and one of state abstention. All right. Um, next appointment of parking committee members. Do you have any luck finding anybody? Thank Thanks you. a lot, John. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah. We have the three people that should show that. It's really on the parking plate. We are emails uh, of interest. Uh, people in the packet. There's a little bit of a sharing. The woman here, she talks about the places she works in. We also we wanted to have a member of the select board on here too. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And Todd as well, I believe. Todd is one of staff. Yeah. Does Todd will Todd facilitate the meetings? You think or not? He'll, he'll support the work of the committee, but he won't be a voting member or. Right. Uh, we've got a lot of work to be done here. It's more research and we have had to get a presentation, so he's uh, agreed to do that work in a supporting way for the parking place. They don't get bogged down writing reports. You know, we're looking for uh, resident involvement here, but not necessarily going to do all the writing time anymore. So that's sounds good, Todd. Sounds good to me. Excellent. Um, so, as far as on the select board, who would like to be on that to serve on that? Are you guys fighting over it? I know we already... haven't discussed it any farther. <laughs> further. And, um, I'd be happy to do it. I don't know if you feel strongly about it. I'd, I'd be happy if you did it. Okay. <laughs> Good. Great. <laughs> Boy, that's close. <laughs> it also excuses me. Be, I, I, pro, I would have abstained on Elizabeth here because she's okay. She's um, interested in this because of MoCo, and I'm the chair at MoCo. So okay, that's another reason not to be there. 
All right. So do we need to vote these in? The um, not these interested parties? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I would make a motion to incorporate those names in your motion. Okay. Who wants to do that? Um, I make a I make a motion to appoint the following members to the um, the new downtown parking committee. Um, Elizabeth Kasparian, Graham Mink, and I'm oh, sorry, I skipped the middle page, and Josh Joshua Goldstein. Um, and I would serve. Should I say my name? No, I can't nominate myself. Yeah, you can. So okay. I say I'm, I'm and, to... and myself is a select board member. The yeah. select board member. Second. I have a motion by Jess and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say yes. yes. Whoops. How many do we plan on having in there? This is all we got. <laughs> we're hoping four or five. I remember we talked about five. Yeah, because we don't want four. four. We're going for five and we're at four. Oh, because Todd and Todd can't vote. So we need more. We need, we need one more. Well, I'm not right. sure. So the committee itself is really putting all a bunch of information. Yeah. Right. Sure They're not really voting. Right. They're going to bring it to right. us. Yeah. Uh, if it comes down to that, right. we'll arm wrestle. Okay. okay. <laughs> or we'll bring it to the board. Right. The is. Yeah. I think the idea is to bring it, bring the information yeah. to us anyway. And do we we have a timeline? We discussed yeah. setting a timeline, but I don't remember. Yeah, November. Six months. Six yeah. months. Six okay. months. Right. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motions pass. Next review bid for sidewalk work. Yeah, well, I might have you speak to this. You were along with the contact with these folks. Yes, there's a contact with uh, Greystone Concrete, which is not high game. Um, also an LLC out of Milton. Uh, the UDG guy used to work for um, SD Iron. Uh, he worked with Scott Lounge, my foreman at the, the shop. They both gave me verbal um, quotes, but they haven't gotten me anything in writing. Uh, Jim Bradley is the only one that's given me anything in writing, and he is the cheapest out of the three at this point. And he's done a lot of work for Morristown. He's done a lot of work yeah. for Morristown. Good work. Good work. Yeah. The reason he's both with Greystone, they actually are the ones that have completed the sidewalk construction from the, <coughs> referred to it as the Bishop Marshall underpass, uh, out past the uh, middle part of the complex by the urban station. Yeah. And so it's like attached. So they were in town already to kind of force them to that purpose. Okay. So do I have a motion regarding this? So moved. Motion by Judy. No second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion? Where is the sidewalk? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the sidewalk is up here at the fire station on the fire station side, that short piece between there and Court Street. Um, right at the very end of Maple, across, there's a blue house on the other side. We took out another 64 feet of that because it was all deteriorating, people were falling and having issues. And then back down through past the uh, elementary school playground, there's, in the crossing itself, there was a uh, manhole that is puffed up mm -hmm. and the concrete was sitting like this. So we've removed that all today and then the rest of that will be back down towards the monument circle. Are you, are you, so, sorry Kevin, are you saying the, the graded building or the elementary school? Graded the graded, graded building. building. Okay, graded. okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion on this? And this is Jim Bradley. Yes. Or, Jim Bradley. This the motion is for him, right? Not for yes. us. Not for. How old is Jim now? I think he's like eighty-five. <laughs> like that. He's amazing. I think he's eighty-four. Eighty-four. Yeah. Yeah. He went to school with my dad. It's amazing how hard he works. He's working on a job on Lower Mountain Road right now, and I cannot believe that man out there throwing concrete, big chunks of concrete. I'm like, are you kidding? That's amazing. Unbelievable. He did my foundation. Yeah, he did mine. He's done three of mine. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys amend the motion to say who it's for and how much. And how much. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Judy will do that. Uh, I make a motion we accept James Bradley Incorporated uh, proposal for sidewalks and I'm assuming it's twenty one thousand total. Twenty six thousand total. Yes. Five thousand dollars. Oh, okay. okay. Twenty six thousand dollar total. Yep. Thanks, Tina. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, next, accept resignation of John Sandor Moore. Who? Uh, John Sandor Moore was our animal control officer for a short period of time. Uh, you see his, his email there. And uh, it just, well, uh, it just didn't work out. He submitted his uh, resignation to the animal control. Mm -hmm. Brian is graciously continuing in that role until we have a, a more defined program and we are working on something that uh, is way more solid and long term. Uh, but it uh, still works as well as police departments. Great. All right, do we hear a motion? I'll make a motion we accept the resignation of John St. Amor. Okay, I have a motion by Don. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to pass. That means you're going to do it for like another 40 years. Is that right, Brian? <laughs> it's that way. Exactly. All right, number seven accept resignation of Jennifer Lucia Cram, EMS volunteer. Do you want to speak to that, Bill? Um, Jen has been uh, our one of our set of main volunteers long term uh, with the squad uh, and then subsequently with EMS. Um, and she's finishing nursing school. She's accepted a full time nursing position um, and uh, needs to simplify her schedule. And this is a way to accommodate that. You know, as, as uh, we don't want to see Jen go, but uh, we're happy for her. Uh, from, uh, on okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? Make it an, uh, um, a motion to accept Jennifer Lucier Cram's uh, resignation from EMS as a volunteer with regrets. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Second. second, thank you. second Any second, further thank discussion? You. Yeah. Could, can we do a thank you for her? She's been out a long time. It'd be really nice to do something. Yeah, I know, I know her as well. She's she's been great. <clears throat> all right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Number eight, sign contract for the Monroe County Sheriff's Department. This is the old contact contract renewal for dispatching services to the Sheriff's Department. Make a motion, we approve it. And your motion by Brian, is there a second? A second. Second by Don. Your motion includes the, the, the sum. The yes, the dollar amount. Is that what you said, Brian? Yes. Is there any further discussion on this? And this is going to sound all wrong, but this is just for dispatch, correct? Just for dispatch. The service. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is this an, an, an an increase, much of an increase from last year? Do we know? It was a bit, a little bit, I think. I, I actually didn't look, to be honest with you, when we, we developed this year's budget, it was with this figure in mind, I believe. And I don't believe it went up that much. Yeah, I remember. I don't think it went up very much at all. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Next, right off the ambulance calls. Everyone knows what this is for. Right? Uh, can you yeah, oh, yeah, someone I, explain? Yeah, yeah. I can. Thank you. Um, every year, this is an annual thing, we write off ambulance calls mostly from private citizens that couldn't afford to pay for the call or had um, just never contacted us to pet. And we obviously, we don't send them to collections. Um, so once a year, we have to write off ambulance calls. Um, this particular year that we're writing off is not is not the year we're in, it's the year before. Um, and I've got some statistics down there on that for you so you can see what we're doing. But um, basically, we had 748 calls. 310 of those were non-transport, so you can't even bill for those anyway. Um, 49 of the calls we could bill for need to be written off because either people didn't pay or um, they didn't contact us for whatever reason they haven't paid. 
Um, that's 11.1% um, of the calls we filled. So basically our collection rate based on the bill's calls is we have a six, we have to write off 6.99% of what we bill, which is extremely low compared to the industry standard, which is closer to 15. And that's this one is even better than the year before. It was almost eight percent. This is seven. So we're getting better at either people are getting better at paying, or uh, maybe more people have insurance than they did. You know, I don't know the reason behind that, that's but a, it's good. maybe part of it's because we don't have many calls. I don't know, but um, it's just a bookkeeping thing more than anything else. Okay, thanks for the explanation, Tina. So, do I have a motion regarding this? Make a motion that we um, write off $22,214.87 of the billed calls for do I do fiscal year 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2021. All right, I have a motion by Judy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? Uh, Go ahead, Bill. So, uh, Tina's correct, but the industry standard nationwide for EMS write-offs is about 12 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we're at half that just speaks testament to three things. One, uh, Tina's diligence yeah. in getting the billing done. Uh, Corey's review of uh, patient charts in-house to make sure that they're complete. Uh, and thirdly, kind of the overlooked one, uh, our folks are pretty good reports, and a lot of, reinsur of insurance reimbursement is how well the report justifies the use of the ambulance. Yeah. Um, so those three things really kind of come together uh, uh, and, and really make it uh, an exceptional number that we're writing off here. Uh, I know I, I, I probably say this every summer when we talk about this, uh, but the, to me that 22,000, that represents, you know, that's underinsured, uninsured. Those are the folks who are truly calling us as the agency of last resort. Right. Uh, and in essence, we become their health care. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we're just not transporting them to health care. But for some of these people, we actually are their health care. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that information. All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. All right, next, discuss the real trail art resolution. Trisha is out here. Look at that background. Oh, beautiful. That. You are so gifted, Trisha. Wow, smart. Mm -hmm. You gotta meet yourself, Trisha. You have the floor, Trisha. Hey, thanks everyone. And I did have to put this rail trail thing behind me because I, what it is. Um, so we have some artwork on the rail trail. River Arts Mural Camp did it a couple years ago as most of you or some of you know the rail trail is being taken over by v trans as of july 1st before we used to be able to just go through vast and they were like yeah do what you want to do so we have a river arts mural camp it's uh later in the summer we are uh going to replace the artwork that is presently on the bridge and v trans came up with this whole big long application that people People that can apply or municipalities, government entities, you cannot apply like River Arts couldn't apply this time. This is really sort of a pilot program through um, VTrans with them taking this all over. And so this is pretty simple. It's just saying that we agree that artwork is great on the rail trail. It sounds good. The resolution is one of several items that Trisha has to Bring together in order to get the application okay. okay. And I have a uh, one of the ones to sign, so if you'd authorize me to sign it. Is a motion okay. for that? Um, I, I make a motion that we accept um, the um, the the what would you call it? The resolution. The resolution for the town of Morrisville to support the installation of artwork along the walking bridge on the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail in downtown Morris. Morrisville, as outlined in our memo. And then, authorize me to sign it. And I authorize um, Bob Beeman to sign it. Okay, I have a motion by Jess. Is there second. A second. Second by Don. Is there any further discussion on this? 
Thank all you favor. for doing this, Trisha. Yeah. All yeah. in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you Thanks, all. Trisha. Appreciate Thanks. that much. Okay, next. Um, James Barlow. Discuss engagement letter from James Barlow. So you've heard me mention James Barlow's name on several occasions over the past year. Uh, Jim Barlow is an attorney. Uh, he has spoken a lot over government law, and he is our very person for both myself and Sarah on bottom occasions uh, to try and make clear what sometimes is very unclear in this whole law. And uh, he, is, uh, he has, has been uh, absolutely vital, keeping us out of hot water, just keeping us going in the, the right direction. Right? So, what he did bring up to me was, he says, I, I love working with folks and I, I love giving the legal advice. We really don't even have an agreement in place for me to do this and really have something that outlines hourly rate expectations and those things. And, and if things don't work out between us, it's a there. So, uh, he sent this along for you to read and uh, if you're good with it. Yeah, and it's not a retainer, it's just an it agreement. Not, there's no retainer fee involved. It simply lays out his arm to raise it. Uh, if he has to put on mileage to, to come down and the money will see it anymore. Sounds good. He was a former um, attorney for VLCT. Yes. And he wrote a lot of the policies that we go by. Still yeah. sample ones that they yeah. suggest to use. That's great. Do I hear a motion regarding this? Make a motion that we uh, accept James W. Barlow, lawyer, to be our um, as accept his engagement letter. Okay. Is there anything else you need in that? And it authorized me to sign it. Uh, authorized Bob to sign yeah. the con. The, okay. Is it a contract or just engagement? It's an agreement. It's an agreement. Okay. Okay. It's All right. We call it an LOU if you want to, but it's it's an engagement letter. So, it's, okay. so I have a motion by Judy. Is there a second? Second. Second with Ryan. Is there any further discussion on this? So Eric, when I was reading through this, um, I had a question. Does, maybe Sarah can answer this as well, but does VLCT, do they give us legal services as well? Mm -hmm. So they do. <laughs> so you know, the, the grand and the bagels, there's a meaning behind it. VLCT is very, very good at explaining uh, perhaps the intent of the law but they stop short of giving us advice on how to proceed. Right. Okay. Jen gives us the advice we need on how to proceed. Great question, I think. There's always this, like, they'll tell you this and this and this, but 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 verify this information with your town attorney. Yeah. I've asked that question before, too. That's a good question. Do, um, does this mem memorandum of understanding have a, a timeline or a, a period of uh, a period of time that it covers. Just, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just there was no, there was no end of this. Simply that if, uh, we're free to terminate at any time. Free to terminate any time. There's. Yeah. So for the past couple of years, he's also been our tax bill attorney, but mm -hmm. he he writes a very specific contract um, for that. Okay. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, discuss and sign municipal road grant program. This uh, is the, the uh, MRGP um, that we use money to uh, stone line uh, the ditches on Garth over last year and purchased uh, several colors needed for that work. This has to do with the uh, Connection between our roadways and uh, waterways in our town that are identified as a need of road control. So every year at this time, they announce the proposed dollar amounts that each community will receive. I don't know how they arrived at the dollar amount. Last year we had thirty thousand dollars. This year we have about twenty-seven thousand. Um, the award for this and this money will be for the summer of twenty-three. His letter of intent speaks to that, and I added that page on there to show that Morristown will be the recipient of $42,000 for NASA. So it's a 
substantially amount of our larger amount. Our match on that is uh, 10,500, um, just 20%. Um, so it's a, a good way of getting the money for a mandate that they gave us your access before. Uh, Eric, can you, so you said it was about 30,000, but um, I just see um, 42, I see in the columns, $42,000, 10,500, yep. is that, and 52,000, is that split between a couple of years, or? No, this is, that is all for the summer of 23's work. Okay. It's completed by the end of next year's current session season. Uh-huh. So the thirty thousand dollars I spoke of was what we had for last oh, summer. Oh, 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 got you. Last summer we spent thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then some. And we measured, you know, we did a lot of work on our <coughs> mm -hmm. no problem meeting our, our our match. Uh, and then this year we had about twenty-seven thousand dollars to spend on the grant money, and we have a match here. We have no problem spending that match, as you can see, the work going on all the road. Um, there are some sections there. There's also work on College Street to be done, public replacement. Steep slope uh, planning, which is in a couple of spots there. So, this year's project hasn't been uh, selected or approved yet. Those are areas we're targeting. But uh, Kevin has reached out to LCPC and Ohio to do the approval process uh, and look at some of these sites uh, so that we can uh, <coughs> apply those grant monies to it for this year. And then next year, next summer, we'll have 42000 in grant money. Our match is 10 5, so the total is 500. I assure you, we end up spending much more than that when we're doing this work because we could not meet the standard that the state has set uh, without spending more money, a lot more money than what they give us. This is forty dollars nice. I appreciate the increase, but when you look for the grand total, the roads and the connectivity with our brooks and streams and the amount of work we need to be done, we have done because we're in a mountainous community. Uh, these grant monies are small in comparison with the actual expenditure of taxpayer dollars. It's a drop in the bucket. It is. <coughs> it is. I'm not swallowing this with the drop in the bucket. Yeah. So do I have a motion regarding this? Make a motion that we accept a letter of intent to participate in the at SFY23 Municipal Grounds Grants in a program. At amount? In the amount of 42000 Did I put matching in? That's fine. Okay. That's fine. All right, I have a motion by Judy. Is there a second? Um, a second. I have to sign. Okay. Second by Jess. Uh, any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. What did you say, Sarah? I did. A couple typos before you submit. Okay. Typos so, so, all right. So we caught one. Email address and um and oh, yeah. and more stuff. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. This Athenian thing is going to your head now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> all right. Next, um, old business. Discuss the noise of ordinance. Oh. Well, as we spoke about before, I gave you the samples. Uh, what I've done is provided you with an opportunity to give you a starting place here. Uh, I took this paragraph, label I, uh, and it's a verbatim copy of what was in the Middlebury uh, noise ordinance. Uh, I even though once I submitted this to you, I sent it to the police department as well. And within a few minutes, they called up and said, please call up and said, hey, uh, the way you have it sectioned out and presented here, you know, pretty much the dogs can bark until midnight Friday and Saturday night, and things can do. So, what I'm going to suggest to you is that this ordinance, <coughs> drop the letter I, move that added paragraph up into letter H for parties and other social events. And it meets uh, the request that was placed in front of you that we were discussing. I don't have an I. I just have an H, and I have red writing. The red. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the letter I. No, no it's, it's, it's here. It's, it's, it's a new one. Okay. It was, 
Do Over I there. In your packet. Maybe. Yeah. It's, oh, an, it's, it's in addition to the packet. So, yeah, I don't have it either. Oh, you don't? No, I've got the red. Go ahead, Eric. The packet itself had a lot of iron in it. Right. Oh, we gotcha. Actually put yeah. The correct, the new version, but I suggest to you on the table. Okay. Okay. Brian, did you have it? You don't have it. <clears throat> That's in the packet on page 27. So we have oh, an I in the packet. Okay. So, Eric, the, the wording is confusing um, the, in the red on under H. Um, on Sunday through Thursday, the hours shall be deemed unreasonable whenever any person shall make complaint of the disturbance during such hours. So, it, it, I don't know, it says to me that if you complain between 10 and 7 about any noise, it's unreasonable. Am I reading that wrong? But I think the way it's reading is between those hours is deemed unreasonable whenever a person shall make a complaint of the disturbance during such hours. If there's complaining of the disturbance during those hours, then those hours are deemed unreasonable between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Then they, the, the, the complaint won't be honored or investigated. No, no, no. But okay. if the hours between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., if there's a complaint of a disturbance, those hours, between those hours, would be found to be unreasonable time for noise to be made. Oh, yeah. that's confusing. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's confusing. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say this language has been tried and tested in Middlebury? It has. Yeah, this is a, I attended a conference of uh, tenant city managers uh, a couple weeks back, and I, I spoke to some senior members of that group and asked them about noise ordinance in their communities. And I told them I had copies from Hartford, Wellington, and Middlebury. And the, the resolution I got from back from them was if you've got Middlebury, use it. It's been tested over time and it's bulletproof. That's why I didn't change any language. Just for being there. I just didn't know if um, average people would understand that. I'm an average person that didn't understand it. That's all. It's the legalese. Yeah. And I put it um, after you called me down to the clerk's list there and asked, and Bill Bear was also the only one that responded. I put it if you have anything other than what we had. Please contact me directly. And only middle Okay. So do we need to take any action on this? What if we I mean, I understand it sounds like um Middlebury's language is tried and true, but it seems to me that if we just swapped the the phrases in the actual sentence, it would make a lot more sense. So if we said whenever any person shall make a complaint of the disturbance during the hours between um, ten and ten and ten and seven. I don't know. Whenever. Why? I mean, I just don't know why. Why can't we just say um, a noise uh, a noise disturbance between the hours of. 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. shall be deemed unreasonable. Mm -hmm. so like, yeah, why do we have to say about a person making a complaint? Why do we have to? See, I think I agree, know where you're going, and I agree. Because this one says that noise is deemed, so if somebody make, calls up and says it, it's automatically deemed a noise ordinance, and he's going to get a $200 bond. I think it should be something saying it shall be investigated. And my, my thoughts, too, and I hadn't noticed it before in this, is there such thing as a warning? We give warnings all the time. Okay, because a lot of people don't know, they have no idea, probably never saw this, never will. Yeah. All of a sudden they're doing something wrong and you, I thought you did. Yeah, no, we give them all Yeah, time. I know I have animal control over the years. Yeah, yeah. You go and you tell them, the next time I come back. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't, it didn't, I didn't think it said it in here, but... And under section 6, under penalty, a violation of this ordinance shall be civil matter enforced in accordance with the provisions of the California Code DSA 1974A and 1977. The civil penalty of $100 may be imposed for any violations of the ordinance. So it allows for officer discretion, but that's, that's already a part of the ordinance. So do you want to... Look at that change, Jess. 
I can, I can yeah. restructure the paragraph and bring it back to the next week. I kind of like that. <laughs> What's that? So like, you change the time. But yeah. It's better to say it that way. It seems like it's a more efficient way to have it have it read. Well, to me, I'm questioning if somebody is blaring music at 11 o'clock, but nobody complains, does that mean that it's not? Sort of like a violation? tree falls in a forest. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, usually if there's no complaints, nobody has a, there is no. It, the complaint can be generated by the officer. Yeah. The officer driving by yeah. hearing noise at that time that can be a complaint. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he'd be the, even if you caught it, <coughs> he'd be driving out and he, he th thought it was. Because and all the time I've done the thing I've did, I've numerous times go to somebody's house and find out there was no problem. They got mad at their neighbors, so they called on the dog. Oh. So if they get mad at you, they might call <coughs> saying, she yelled at me. So that's why I was hoping that the officer get there and can check it out. Okay, what do we want to do with this? So I just have one other question. I think I know the answer to this, but the, the rest of this is our noise ordinance. It is untouched. Correct. So I'm just wondering about consistency. And the only place that times are stated as under construction noise, other than the new age. And for construction, it says 10 to 5. And for H, it's going to say 10 to 7, except for Fridays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just wondering about 5 a.m. Is there an inconsistency there? Are we saying that <coughs> construction noise at 5 o'clock in the morning is okay, but um, music at 5 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I, I'm just, so, I guess I'm talking to you guys. Kevin, just a comment on that, Don. Yeah. Um, so, like cleaning the parking lot out here, I have to do it 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning when there's no vehicles in it. If I don't have that variance, then I'm, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Okay, I guess that's probably all I need to do. <laughs> yeah, and I have people complain about that too. But. You do. <clears throat> no, they don't they hate the scraping <laughs> but of the are you out. happy that you got to work <laughs> on the clear roads so yeah i'm thinking it could say on sunday through thursday loud or offensive noise made between the hours of 10 a 10 p.m and 7 a.m shall be deemed unreasonable whether whenever any person shall make the complaint etc cetera, etc cetera. <coughs> just because it sounds like we need the the language of whenever any person shall make a complaint of the disturbing during such hours. So you would just add in on Sunday through Thursday, loud or offensive noise made between the hours of pick out between. And then and same with um, <coughs> do the same with the the next sentence about Friday, Saturday and special holidays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay with me. Okay. Are we we're not doing any action on this tonight? No, we're gonna change the light now. We're very back on the phone. We're changing it. <coughs> any other comments? Okay. All right. Thank you. Next, approve warrants. Make a motion by approval. I have a motion by Brian or for a second. Second. Second by Judy. I'm gonna just say about the package. She did. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Warrant to pass. TA report, Eric. Well, it's been three weeks since the last I had a meeting. Uh, I'll take the public duty because there's a couple of pages where it's talking to you. After having gone to the conference, I am reminded again. Unfortunately, we are to have such hardworking, dedicated staff in all departments. Um, the varying problems that I've heard discussed from around the state, some of them much more significant than others, uh, makes us shine. Uh, we have a, a very
very few vacancies. We have applications for vacancy to be advertised, and uh, so we we'll the quality of the folks that we've got on board and the quality of the folks we currently have on board are exemplary and uh, very, very fortunate to be a part of this team. Uh, while there, I volunteered uh, to serve on the Law Enforcement Policy Committee for VLCT. Um, they are dealing with the topic that I'm very concerned with, which is the um, attempt to eliminate qualified immunity for police officers. I think the, I certainly understand the intent of the emotion behind them wanting to do the profile and do this. But I think there is a tremendous cost to be paid by the taxpayers if it happens. Um, not the least of which might be an erosion of the numbers that we currently have. And the case of the team has worked very hard to increase the numbers uh, there at the PD and been successful in doing so. We would be supportive of the board. Uh, if, if this is taken away, there will be long term applications. There will be costs associated with those that do decide to stay. There's liability insurance we have to be carried by them personally. And I'm not sure that they're willing to take on the cost of those insurance policies in order to just be the good people and continue to police our community that are going to the town to take that on, which is an increase in the cost of policy. I think that the, I think I'll enjoy my time on this on this committee, but it's very, very important to me. Take a breath before they make a motion decision on something like this one. Get off my, my soapbox. Uh, I uh, participated in the training for the uh, uh, cannabis and local control boards. Uh, video should be available soon. They do an edit on that before they put it back out on that, that video to you folks. Um, I'll let you make kind of your own conclusion on it. I don't know what my conclusion is at this point, but I will let you folks watch it. Just um, well, it's an interesting to watch and listen to, to what the state has given to local boards for purview over these applicants. Uh, you said you're going to make that link available to us? Yes. <coughs> okay. So Thank you. Available. Okay, thanks. Uh, I've engaged John to provide a drive of construction for the Brian Park and Palm parking area. Uh, as simple as it sounds to build a parking lot, the state owns the land. They requested a, uh, an RFP go out for the bids, which is fine to do that anyhow. But they want an engineer drawing to show the layering and how the parking lot's going to be constructed and the dealing with the, the runoff and so on and so forth. So it's, it, uh, it may slow our project down just a little bit. Um, I met with the cemetery associations, uh, both of them, and their leadership. And we may have a very viable candidate to fill the Sexton's position. Uh, this gentleman looks, uh, lives in town. Uh, he is a uh, long term wife, long term marriage uh, is into one of the families here in Marshall. They have retired. Uh, he is a um, funeral director and he is past president of the Funeral Directors Association. And they built a home here in Marshall and they're retired here. He's very much interested in becoming our Sexton. So. I should meet with him with Dennis Smith. I uh, came Dennis Smith later this week. That's cool. That would be a, a huge hole that we would have filled up on the end of the mm -hmm. <laughs> So good, Sarah. Oh, Brian. Hi. I've been uh, notified by uh, Agency of Transportation District 6 that the Walton Road Bridge has been recommended for funding. So the structure grant that was really submitted, written and submitted, um, we're through that first hurdle of review and we'll go out and see if. Uh, Select us for funding for that, which would be great since the cost estimate was generated last fall and the price of steel is now through the roof. Yeah. So, to have additional funds available might be that buffer that we would need in order to complete the job. Um, the Jersey Way project uh, is still out there. I mean, with uh, Mr. Mosh tomorrow to discuss uh, moving how we move forward with that project. Filtration system needs to go in. The money is is still earmarked there, but the state is not going to be completely patient with us if we keep dragging our feet. Not really dragging our feet. It took some research on Mitzi's Park to discover who owns the property. Um, hence my meeting with Mr. Mcnutt tomorrow. 
<laughs> he wasn't where he saw it. So uh, we'll uh, hopefully come to you with a proposal on uh, easements and such uh, in the near future. We'll see. Uh, started a conversation with modernizing management. We're working with the village water and light toward uh, a dynamic exercise in the fall, uh, late fall this year, um, to simulate the breach of the Green River Reservoir Dam. Uh, not emergency management, as we uh, talk about some assistance in rating and scoring how we do and giving us advice um, afterwards to, to show how we can do things better. Visiting the community center on uh, Union Street this week with Stuart Bang. He wants to show me the new improvements and invites the members of the board to stop at any time and see that, especially after after uh, school lets out when the kids are there. What, what, which Stuart Street is it? Union Street. Oh, Union Street. Yep. Yeah, Stuart gotcha. Bang. He's the, the CEO of Law Health Partnership. Oh, great. Great. Uh, been in Crown Law and the area partners and, and uh, Bobby Mack getting it back up and going. Former E equals M T Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, Anna McCormick, our new recreation coordinator, has hit the ground running. She's very self motivated. We're very fortunate she joined our team, doing some uh, very very good work. Uh, her experience in dealing with children uh, of that age is uh, certainly invaluable. So she has looked at this program, the lenses that I the lenses that I don't have, uh, and it's really really interesting to see what she is uh, bringing together, and uh, I, I think she's got to do some great work here. And um, Highway Department, extremely busy, Walton Road project is ongoing. They're, they're uh, pretty much from the Walton Road Bridge all the way to the Johnson Town Line. And they're cutting back the brush, uh, reclaiming the rights of right away up through there. They're, um, they've shaved the burns, the edges of the road off, keeping the water in the road. So the water now, when it rains, goes off the edges into the ditch with logs. They're cleaning the ditches out. Um, they'll be stone lining some portions of those ditches, and I think there's at least one culvert to be replaced, but most of those have been replaced over the years. So they have that going on along with the sidewalk demolition on the Elmer Street that we talked about earlier tonight. Rescue Swab had a, a very busy month last month. Their volume was up over eight falls last month. Uh, they continue to do fantastic work in the community. I, I can go on with every member of the staff here, Tricia, of the music series, River Arts, uh, you know, the smoke is coming off from her sandals, so uh, she's on the move and working very, very hard. Todd is extremely busy. The RD and Planning Council, all the permitting and all that kind of the office is just, uh, it's incredible the work product they put out. I can speak to every member of the staff in this building and the work they're doing, it is amazing. The pace in which we have to work in order to keep up with our community, and uh, very, very proud of our own. And that is the extent of my report. We're going to let's do this. Okay. Is there any questions for Eric? Thanks, Eric. Next, select board concerns. Don? <laughs> I did my. Uh, civic duty today and showed up for jury duty in Burlington. And I do want to say I put a strong plug in for our police department in Morrisville. The uh, very difficult job that they have, maybe for that reason, the defense attorney wasn't too impressed with me and didn't select me for jury duty. But I did want to say that it is on the record. Um, I did, after the last meeting, we were asked as select board members to go up on Camp Bell Road and take a look at the uh, the work that was uh, <clears throat> the condition of the road. Now, I'm not any kind of a road expert, but I will say I drove up there and I thought my naive eyes thought that the eye of the road looked pretty darn good. But uh, I would agree. I rode up there myself. I did too. Uh, that's not necessarily. But I did talk to Scott about it when I got a chance to talk to Scott and kind of agreed. Um, last Friday, Judy and I attended a housing summit, uh, did that online. That was three or four hours. And, uh, I will say it was for me an eye opener as to just the degree of how, how important the housing issue is. I, I knew it was important. I, did not appreciate 
how important housing is in this state, in this county, and in this town. And uh, there's a lot of different groups. There were many groups there. Judy, you may speak to this a little bit more, but uh, there was a lot of groups represented there and very impressed with, with all that uh, they're doing to find housing for people. It's, one of the numbers was there's 500 and some odd people looking for affordable housing in this county and there was what seven turnovers or eight turnovers available it's just not even close it's people are just they don't have anywhere to live which is a pretty sad state of affairs that we're dealing with right now i do want to send out a, sh a shout out to uh, the town crew uh, for the third time in the last 12 months i've had this massive limb fall off trees near my house and it closed down the road for a period of time and uh, um, uh, member, uh, s several people from the town came and helped out to clean up. At one point, we had seven people working on this one branch, and it took two hours to clean it up, not for all seven of us. <coughs> the road was closed for a little bit. So thank you, Kevin, and uh, thank you, Scott, who did show up with a, with a small crew. I also want to just echo what uh, Eric said. I am continually impressed at the staff in this building and the staff in this town. And, everybody that I've worked with and uh, I can't I can't say enough about I can't echo enough what, what you've already said you're absolutely right that's great thank you uh, Judy I'd like to thank Judith for putting on the uh, agenda page the pages that coincide with the agenda items that's that's very helpful thank you and just to follow up um, some little statistics from the housing um, Memorial housing partnership put the uh, conference on and uh, the Moyle County needs 5,800 homes by 2025 uh, and um, and uh, what was it? Uh, we should be building like 100 homes a year and it's it's not happening and that and that's just homes that doesn't apply to the people who are homeless because they're just looking for a place to lay their head um, so in 2022 between 20 2020, 2020 and 2022, the house costs, <clears throat> well, 2016 to 2018, house and condos average were $249,000. And between 2018 and 2020, the housing costs rose by 12%. 2020 to 2022, housing costs rose by 46%. So, um, and the other issue is besides housing is transportation. There are people living in Johnson who work in Stowe, they can't get there. So transportation is a huge issue. And that's something I think uh, was brought up that we're gonna be looking at. And the other was Todd probably is very aware of this, that uh, we get the downtown designation and Act 250, I may have this wrong, but I believe Act 250 kind of constricts, constricts how we can expand our high density housing or zoning. So there needs to be some work done at the state level in order to ease some of the burden that the towns are feeling. That's all I have. That's it. Thank you, Judy. Jess. Um, I don't have a select board concern, but I do want at some point to discuss the um, ordering of the agenda items and um, we don't necessarily have to discuss that here in public maybe an executive meeting executive session um, that's my only concern okay Brian I have no concerns I just want to say I agree about the people that work in this building I've been working with most of them for quite a while and they're all just so great it, it's a it's a pleasure it makes my job easier also all of our volunteers I think volunteer is a big thing. I was talking to some lady in Stowe and she was asking me about things like that. And I said, if you can volunteer for anything, I said, it's a great thing to have in, that, in your community. We have a lot of them and uh, great people. Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> yeah, actually just gonna give kudos to one of our town people today. I got a call this afternoon from a gentleman that was um, extremely pleased with working with one of our town staff, and that's Todd Thomas. And he said, jokingly, he said, boy, 
I've heard a lot of bad stuff about Todd Thomas, but none of it is true. This guy is right on it. He does an excellent job, and I couldn't. He said he is the town nugget. That's what he told me. And I was like, well, that's pretty nice. I said I'll pass that on. The town store. The nugget. <laughs> the town nugget. nugget. But and I, I think we have a great town staff. I do. But everybody is. But it's really nice to get something like that. You know, a phone call personally with somebody that's that's been dealing with Todd. It just it's great. You know. So uh, that's nice. And I, I did have, I wanted to have a little personal note that uh, I, I observed on my trip to Europe. I went to Belgrade, Serbia, and I was working um, at a rowing regatta and dealing with a team from Ukraine. And um, it was a pretty amazing experience. I was really lucky to be there. And, and um, the, the team got there to compete, but they didn't have uniforms. And luckily, uh, this uh, uh, clothing company in, in Boston, um, JL Sports, they um, they knew that they weren't going to have uniforms, and they had some made and shipped there, and they shipped through us. So I got to give them the mm -hmm. the uniforms, and it was just amazing that whole experience. And um, they also didn't have uh, oars to compete with, and we made them oars um, to compete with there. But it was just the stories are unbelievable. I spent about three different times, three different days with the head coach of Ukraine from uh, Kiev. Um, and he was saying how his, his car got blown up in one of the explosions. And he said, you couldn't even recognize it, it was a car, you know? And he said, just, just something to take away with it is 450,000 houses were destroyed so far in this. And I was like, what? 450,000 houses? And he said, you really realize that when you live there and see everything that's going on. And, you know, I wouldn't normally put this kind of thing out there, but it's just such a powerful thing. And it felt good from where we were helping these folks. And um, they're so grateful for, for everything that uh, all the efforts that are, you know, given to them. And it's just a sad situation, but I'll leave it at that. But it was pretty remarkable, the whole, the whole thing. But that, that left me with this, like, wow, you know. So that's all I got. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. So next we'll do uh, community concerns. We have community concerns tonight? Seeing none. <laughs> Let me, uh, I, I like to. Oh, Laura's out, I'm sorry. Laura, go ahead, Laura. Can you hear us, Laura? Sorry, um, I had it on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I heard there, that Campbell Road was being discussed. Yeah. I just want to be really clear. The road is in great shape because all the water is being diverted into the five properties. So um, the, we're not concerned about the road, but you're diverting all of that salt water and all of that and into our properties. And I'm being... I'm having huge property damage, as are five other properties. So I just wanted to make that clear. I can appreciate Laura's take on uh, as the property owner down there. Their property's on the downhill side of the road. There's no ditch on that side because the water does drain off from the road. There's, there's no ditch to put in. It would make it worse uh, to have the ditch. There's nothing we can do for properties that are on the lower side of a highway. We have them here in the village. We have a house on Maple Street whose driveway is below uh, the grade of the, of the street, and the water comes down her driveway as well. We, you know, work with her. Um, Eric. Yes. Um, that's not true. We have always had a ditch. It's only been the last um, two years that the plowing has um, filled it in. There's always been a ditch, and they would come every so often and dig it, and it, it solved the problem. But again, because they've, or it's gone further over now, you can see all the road dirt is now in the ditch. Okay, have you been up there lately, Kevin? Have you checked out? I have. I mean, there is some debris in the ditches uh, from the road itself. Just normal, Run nearly... Off. Debris that gets, does get pushed in from plowing, it does happen. Well, I wish you guys would. I wish you would let us walk you through, and I'll show you 
how it's being diverted. Um, and, and I've talked with the highway to pe- people, and this is not normal. I mean, it's we're talking feet where it's, you know, pushing in. And literally, I have creeks running through my property now. And that has never happened in, except for this last couple of years. Okay. Do you know Do you know where she lives up there, Kevin? I do. And you've have you checked out her property or? I did. The water comes down and goes through the corner. And it's not a lot we can do as far as. I mean, I could put in a bigger hole. Put in some more rock. And it, it will might satisfy the problem for a year. All right. Would you be mill- Once the side of it gets filled back up into the stone, it's just going to do it again. Yeah. I'm just thinking, would you be willing to meet with her and maybe myself up there so we could take a look at what she's talking about? I'm willing to do that. that Well, I'd I'd like to have my other five neighbors because it's it's five of us. That's fine. You know, I'm being the the highway liaison anyway. I'm I'm willing to meet up there with whoever's concerned about it and and see what we can, if we can see. I I took a ride up there too, but I don't know where you live, Laura. But um, I know three or four of us on the board have been up there. And I honestly don't know what you're talking about because I guess I don't know where you live. But um, I, I knew that road; I frequent it quite often. But um, it uh, it seems to me that the being a dead end road, that it's uh, you know the people that are. I know you made remarks before about the people speeding on the road, but those are your neighbors you need to talk to that are speeding probably because it's a dead end road. Yeah. But, um, I'm, I'm happy to meet up there to go up there and and meet with whoever wants to. We can set up a time or something and uh, go up even later this week, perhaps. How's that sound? That that would be great. Okay, let's. Um, we have your information, your contact info. We can we can get together. And choose okay. Another. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Is there any other community concerns? So the change in the or in the the agenda was uh, my assuming. Uh, we have in the not so recent past, but uh, for quite some time now, had our community concerns in the very beginning of the meeting. And those conversations, as we all know, have taken on a life of their own. They're, they're not action items, they're a time for the community to come in and voice a concern, but they have uh, they have gone for periods of time that are taking away from the business meeting portion, which is what we really meet for. And you have about four hours a month, the five of you, uh, to fit in making the large financial decisions for this town. And their decisions on those items were being made later and later in the meeting. And I have tried to figure a way of getting it to where we could get our business conducted and, uh, and, and be done with that uh, discussion without thinking, gosh, it's quarter nine and I'm getting tired. We've still got executive session to do. Uh, this this was my attempt at, at trying to bring the focus to what we're here for, which is the business meeting. We invite people here to support these agenda items. We have <coughs> staff members here on overtime uh, to give the information you may, may need or may want during the meeting. And to me, it was. Uh, made more sense for us to get the business meeting conducted first, uh, after which those folks could leave, and then the community concerns come out. You receive the information and move on from there, but it minimizes the inconvenience of folks who have set aside time. Most recently, Pike Industries representative was on for two hours waiting for his agenda item to come up while we spent almost an hour during community concerns on agenda items, or items you can't make an action on. So that, that's why I did this. Um, I, I understand the concern of the appearance that it may have that we're trying to keep the, the public away or not hear them, making it inconvenient for them. But I would show you that you had 12 significant uh, items, 13, to discuss tonight, including the noise ordinance. You know, uh, it is 725. Our business meeting is just about completed, and we're in community concerns now. To me, that is the appropriate time to handle it. It's when people are still fresh, 
but we have a big decision behind us, and now we can hear community concerns at this point in time. That was my reasoning behind it. I am certainly wide open to your, this is your agenda. I don't want to hear your folks, and if you'd like to change the order of that, I have no objection to doing that, but I'm just trying to, trying to bring a more streamlined process to our meeting so you guys can get help your campus. Yeah, yeah, I know Jess was bringing this up. I had a chat with her before the meeting, and I, I perhaps agree with one of her ideas was to maybe have a time limit. I know that's a super hard thing to do, but I think whether it's at the beginning of the meeting or the end of the meeting, it almost needs a time limit. I, I remember it was an hour and 10 minutes when community concerns went, and that night I got home at 10 o'clock. And um, it, it shouldn't be distracting or these people go off on a tangent. And I, it's me, I mean, I'm running the meeting, but I believe that people deserve the chance to speak and say what they want. So at times, maybe I let them go on too far. But I do like the idea, the fact that we are here to conduct a town business. You know, this was my idea 12 years ago, because no one had a time to, to speak from the community. And I remember saying to Dan Lindley, well, can't we put an agenda item on there, community concerns? And he's like, well, yeah, you can do that. And so that's how it started. We, it, during that time, we had at the beginning because we didn't have, we had a lot shorter meetings back then and didn't have the community involvement we have now. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, that's a great thing. But I like the idea of conducting our business, you know, especially with me, I get up at 3.30 in the morning and I'm at quarter time going, oh yeah, we'll spend that million dollars on this, you know. It's nice to do the business of the town first, but I, I love your idea of, you know, let someone talk for five minutes or something like that, or, or 10 minutes, I don't know. Three. But yeah, Three. whatever. <laughs> but I, I, I remember there was an hour and 10 minutes one night I was sitting here, I was like, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and like I said, maybe a lot of it's my fault because I let people go on, but that's a big part of it. People want to be heard and they want to get their concern out there. And so you got to listen to them, you know, but you know, is there a, is there a compromise? I, I enjoyed this. I think it also went smoothly tonight, the regular portion of the meeting, but I don't know, you know, I'm open to what you folks thought. So I, I told Jess earlier, is, let's discuss it as a board. Mm -hmm. I like it at the end. This is the first time we've done it. I like it at the end because I was able to focus on what the business was. And I didn't have the sometimes the stress of what the community concerns are <laughs> yeah. and kind of getting riled up about that or whatever. It's it's in your head instead of being able to focus on what my, my responsibility is here. You, you, that's exactly what happened to me. You know, you see certain people come in and you're like, oh boy, how is this going to be? Yeah. Remember the meeting I said, you guys, this is going to be really short tonight. I go, no, this, <laughs> this is the reason, this is the reason, and this is the reason. <laughs> like halfway through, I'm like, see? <laughs> <clears throat> Anyhow, what's your take on it, Don? Well, I, Eric and I talked about this last week, and I, you know, I shared a little bit of my concern about it then, and, and uh, I, I worry about community perception um, that they are, they might be thinking that we're trying to uh, create an agenda where their concerns are at the end and we're not really listening to them, that kind of thing. I do agree, I, I know I mentioned this to Eric last week, and um, I, I do think if we, can, if we can just limit the time on the discussion. At the last meeting, I think it was the last meeting, I mean, I'm guilty, and I said that to Eric last Friday, you know, I, I'm guilty of continuing some of this conversation and, and, uh, and making it more lengthy than perhaps it needs to be, but I think if we, I think it's important to have community concerns. I think it's a great thing that you did 12 years ago, and I'm glad it's still there, but maybe we need to look at just uh, shortening the amount of time that people have to speak, listen to what they have to say, and if they have more to say, that they could put it in writing and send it to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are, that wraps right. up my thoughts. I like it at the end, because again, uh, not to shut anybody off, they can come then, I like to be fresh when I first get here because we got business to do. That's what we're here for. Okay, listening to their uh, concerns is great. We can listen to them then. I want to get it done, my business done before I start getting <laughs> getting old. So I like it at the end. Also, anybody that has a really concern can get on the agenda, right? 
I try and control the agenda to items that you can take action on. Those items that are impacting very few, or in some cases only the person speaking, I am not real open to allowing that to happen. They have your email addresses. They have my phone number and email address. Uh, those concerns can be voiced in many different ways rather than taking out the valuable time and the very short amount of time we have your focus every month. I, I recognize the busy month. I lived that for five years here and I wasn't as busy during that five years as you folks currently are. So I, I, uh, I'm open to your suggestion on this. I, I really am, but I, I really want to try and bring the focus back to the business of the day. But by putting it on the agenda, and you know, like you said, whether we vote on tonight, the concern, you guys voted to go up there and meet, meet her. That's all you have to do. Because I think if you start getting, if you don't do it the way we're doing it, and, and again, I think that limit should be at the end, even though the you know, meeting's set there, is to not have it go on and on and on, because sometimes it's hard to shut them off. You know, they're, they're wanting, you want to talk so that's why i think they should have their talk but it may not be i, I like this i'd like to try this for a while anyways and, and see because i think it's it was very good tonight jess you you have the floor i i i came to the meeting feeling like don did like don does or did um concerned that it appears by putting community concerns at the end that we are um we're sidelining community concerns and we're making it more, more onerous for people to share their concerns. Um, <clears throat> I, that said, I'm open to trying it in this order for a couple weeks, um, seeing how the public uh, feels about it in general, um, seeing the, what our, the length of our meetings looks like, mm -hmm. length of our meetings looks like, um, if we do find that we have more energy and we're running more efficiently. Um, but also, I'd like to, if we're going to do that, if we're going to try this new way, I'd, I'd like to just establish some some rules for, you know, um, I know we all know each other and, you know, uh, so a lot of times people come up to the mic and they just start talking. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just saying like, this is the rule for everyone. In you five know, minutes or whatever. You, got, you have five minutes, you have three or three minutes, you know, introduce yourself, <laughs> you know, whether or not you're a voting um, resident of, of Morris, fellow Morris Town. And then, you know, express your concern. And if, you know, and ideally, if you have something in writing about what you're here for, um, present it to us um, beforehand so we can have a look. I totally agree. So, um, that's, I'm, that's needed you know, to happen for a while. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you all would be interested in establishing the, the time limit um, now. If we can. If we could. Three, does three minutes seem fair? Does five minutes mm -hmm. seem? Because we can always, you can always, we can always decide to extend it. We can agree right. to extend that. I right. think having a limit of three minutes, saying. How long, Don? No more than five. Mm -hmm. I could, I could go with three. Three is good for me. Three is good for me. Because we may also have multiple community concerns too. And then, do we want to say, and community concerns may only take this number of minutes total in the meeting or I mean so we, that, could, we yeah. could say no more than 20 minutes or something like that more than right. 15 minutes five people five concerns or half an hour, yeah. but how do we choose who's going right. next it's a consistency right yeah right. it's it's just being consistent yeah in regards to the topic because if they bring up a topic or concern and you want it and you think it has it mm -hmm. so when I say if they have to bring a concern and they, they they want the floor on an agenda item and it's really only serving one or two people. Mm -hmm. If the topic they're discussing is more broad, more broad reaching, more broad affecting in our community, that's more in line with the agenda item. And you folks can look at me and say, we like this as an agenda item, let's discuss this for the next time. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No problem. But, yeah. All right, so three minutes, we'll try that. Mm -hmm. No more than 15 total. You want to? I, I would ask you to stay consistent. Okay. And then, like you said, if the topic itself you want for <coughs> discussion, you pull the board, board members. Um, you know, right. Can we go three more minutes? What, what do you, you know, right. and then just do it that way. We'll try that. Such that you're setting the boundaries and, and holding them there. But if you need to move because of 
the topic being discussed, then you have that, that option. There. And we'll keep this format for a few weeks and see see what it looks like. Is that okay? Can, can yeah, we ask sure. Judith or someone to be the timekeeper for us? Great. Judy. <laughs> Great. Great, thank you. She was ready. Because she wants to go home too. <laughs> yeah. find the most annoying ring. <laughs> to the VLCT, strongly, strongly recommend that you have it at the very end and you conduct the business first, similar to town meeting. So at four, mm, four town meeting, you can do the business, the warm point. thing that you can take action on, and then you have other business at the end of the meeting that that's, um, so that voters yep. aren't used to that system at town meeting, this would be the same. very similar process. The other idea I just had, and it might be too bureaucratic, but um, the BCA, we have the rules of um, procedures for when we have people come in for hearings or the public to come in so that it's clearly defined and they are given that ahead of time that, you know, to state their names. So mm -hmm. then if you want to make sure that you're being consistent and, yeah. and fair to everybody, you could, it could be a very simple thing, but you've got your three minutes. It, uh, yep. You know, the board can decide to extend it or whatever, but. Right. That's good. Those are good points. Yep. Well, I, uh, looking at that earlier tonight, I'm like, well, community concerns and other business, that could be the same thing. That's what you're talking about. Because mm -hmm. we have had that other business on there the whole time, but the fancy community concerns, that's really the same thing. You don't need to have both things there, really. Other, other business is where we do is the, is the catch for. Executive, executive session. session. Right. Okay. Yeah. I okay. tend to like to speak to Right. Maybe I need to tell Eric when I want to speak as clerk or treasurer. Sometimes I just want to give a quick update. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good, yep. everyone? Yep. Yep. All right. Um, do we want to have something formal that we hand to people? Can we just use a similar thing to the BCA? I can. You all have it in your books that I yes. can pay you. Okay. Um, if you don't have them, I can email them all around you and you can see. I, it might be too bureaucratic. Right. It's yeah. just a I've read it before. Yeah. It is too bureaucratic. Okay. <clears throat> but something simple would be good. Yeah. I mean, even even just like a little post yeah. like community concerns, state your name. Yeah. Three minutes yeah. to talk. It's it, it's posted here on the wall if that's appropriate right. or not. But you have three minutes. It's a visual. People can see it. We don't mm -hmm. have to repeat ourselves with everybody. And we don't have to print paper all the time. Yeah. yeah it's like a kindergarten classroom. Or like, like or the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, other business. Wow. It's not even 8 o'clock. <laughs> How about anything else? Jason's back there. He's never here. Garth, what are you guys doing? What are we doing? Uh, business has picked up, unfortunately, but summertime's coming, so that's normal. Um, our staffing level is looking great. Um, we need one more, so hopefully we can find that soon. And yeah, everything's been good. Good. Smoothly, yeah. Good. Nice to see you. You don't come in very often. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Yeah, I was wondering, and I, I don't want this to be a, uh, a, people have to do it, but sometimes if the, the police department, EMS, and fire, and, and highway want to talk to us about some training they've been to, or just briefly give us a synopsis of what's going on in their department, that would be welcome. And I think the public might like it too. You get me an editor. <laughs> we need it. We need it. Or bleep. The bleep. I thought you brought one with you. <laughs> no, actually, Jason yeah. was second assistant chief. Yeah. He'll probably be seeing him here a lot. Yeah. So. Good. That's what I thought that might be the case. You're hiding back there behind Sarah. But I did want to say that um, I have been tuning in to other select board meetings. I think I've said that before. And, and, um, Essex and Jericho and Johnson and Hardwick and you know I have not seen another select board meeting when you have all department heads here mm -hmm. in the room it's pretty amazing you know you go go look at them they're, they're not mm -hmm. we are so lucky and thank you for for doing that it's a big deal it's a big deal to me and that's part of why we have such a great staff you know the town clerk's not not at those meetings you know very rarely unless she's got something to do and you're almost always at these you know, I just thank you. Thank you for doing that. 
That's great. It means a lot. <clears throat> I'll echo Eric made the comment about the conference and he felt fortunate. So a lot of the chatter at the national um, conference was tension between the clerk's office and the, their boards. And I, and I actually felt very blessed or other staffs and departments and it was all this negativity. And I, was like, I felt very blessed to work here and, That's great. and not, and not have that feeling and we're a big team. Be like, oh, you should come more time. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Good to hear. Terry. Yeah. Likes to refer to this is when I go to Morristown, I tell everybody I'm going to Grandma's house. <laughs> she says that's the feeling I get. Oh. The atmosphere here is like going to Grandma's house. Nice. Boy, we're all touchy feely tonight. Yeah. Right? yeah. <clears throat> Anything else? No. Do I hear a motion or adjourn? So moved. Motion by Judy. Do it. Second. Second by Don. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now adjourned at 743.